Hi friends, have you ever wanted to make your own podcast? We recommend using Anchor. It's a service that we use to host our podcast for free, and they will also distribute your podcast to all the listening platforms for you. There's also these really cool creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, and they help you grow and make money with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor, that's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started. second episode of season two of the adventures of power dog and dog land hello i'm hank's mom phoebe and i'll be sharing this story with you do you remember where we left off power dog and tuffy had stayed out way too late for school night and they were actually just about to miss the last shuttle back to the college of the dog arts where they were both now living in a dormitory or dorm together do you remember the college of the dog arts High above, but not too high above, the thriving and thronging city of Lictopolis, there was a floating moon. And on that floating moon was the College of the Dog Arts. The college had recently undergone a glorious rebuild and refresh, getting all new buildings, new sports fields, and a luxurious upgrade for the gardens. For you see, our lava-eating alien creature friends, the family known on Dogland as the Abbas, one of whom had unintentionally trashed the college campus, had also helped repair it and helped make it better than it had ever been. Nestled into a shady glen of trees and shade plants at the far edge of the oldest part of the campus, where nothing had been destroyed or rebuilt after, there was a small cottage. It was not a dingy, damp cottage, just because it was in the shade. No, no, you mustn't think that. Rather, it was a bright little cottage with window boxes filled with colorful flowers that looked a lot like brightly colored geraniums here on Earth. Inside this cottage, it was never too cool or too hot. It was the very picture of comfort and tranquility. Tranquility is a long word meaning peace or calm, and it was fitting that this cottage of tranquility would feel like such a peaceful place, as it was the restful hideaway and home built by and belonging to TikTok Bunny. I'm not sure if you remember this, but TikTok Bunny is a master gardener, a next level meditator, and a universe exploring bunny creature. We call him a Renaissance Bunny because he is trained and highly skilled at many things. This is not to be confused with a term that starts with Jack or Jill of all trades, as that expression is really just the first part of a saying that ends with master of none. TikTok Bunny is a master of many trades. Anyway, getting back to this place of tranquility, most everyone in the universe and the Dogoverse know that bunny cottages are the absolute best place to find comfort. And as I said before, it was dawn, just when the sun was rising in the east on Dogland, much like it does here on Earth. But on the college moon above the world of Dogland, the sunrise was even more golden and felt entirely magical. You could almost take a bath in the golden light. TikTok Bunny was a fan of rising with the dawn, and so he had on this very morning He was just starting a kettle to make nettle tea when he heard a soft tapping on his door. He wasn't expecting any visitors, 
But he opened the door and was pleasantly surprised to see the golden sun rays shining off of the golden coat of his unexpected visitor, casting a long shadow across the cottage's front door. Power Dog woke up with a start as someone was turning the squeaky knob on the squeaky dorm room door. Tuffy came in and plopped down on his own bed across from Power Dog. They both looked out the window at the magical sunrise, which was making Tuffy's soft, tawny brown fur glow just a little. How late did you stay up? he asked Power Dog. Power Dog slid off his headphones and looked down at the notepad next to his bed. He had found it hard to settle after they got back from Lictopolis the night before, just barely catching that shuttle. Tuffy had fallen asleep right as his sweet doggy face had hit his soft pillow, but Power Dog had felt way too unsettled to even lie still, so he had stayed up looking for quiet distractions. I'm not sure how late, but I think I did actually come up with some fresh new jams for musical notation class. All of the dogs at their college studied musical notation, as it helped them better understand everything from math and the arts to the inner workings of their natural world. It also helped them to express themselves. It was quickly becoming Power Dog's favorite class. He felt that he could practically feel and taste music. Power Dog rubbed his eyes, shook his head, stretched out all four corners of his doggy body, and looked out the window of their dorm room onto the beautiful play field outside. Sun's up. Yeah, it's going to be a good day today, said Tuffy. What you got going on, asked Power Dog. Well, it's my last day of training with TikTok before his sabbatical. Power Dog nodded. I know he's going on a wander of sorts, but can you remind me what he said sabbatical means again? He was never afraid to ask what a big word means. <laughs> oh yeah, big word alert there, laughed Tuffy. He said sabbaticals are like holidays or a break from work but also you're supposed to do something special for your mind or your body or your soul or, or like hopefully all of it. And then maybe you can also learn something new or just get good rest or, you know, travel. It could be like all those things all wrapped up into one from what I remember. Yeah, and he definitely is a traveler, Power Dog laughed back. Tuffy, do you know, is he going to take off in like a rocket or something? Can we watch? Tuffy gazed out the window and slowly shifted to look up as high as he could look. Gosh, I sure hope so, Power Dog. They both looked at the sky and said, in unison, Wish Taffy could, could see, see that. that. Meanwhile, Taffy and Celie were racing along the waves, giggling and splashing each other. No fair, cried Taffy as Celie did a spinning backflip and left her in his trail with great ease. She paddled along, feeling very glad she had these new strap-on fins to help her doggy feet propel her through the water as she rode a perfect wave up onto the beach of Dogger Falls Island, where Seely was already lounging and acting as if he'd been there for hours instead of minutes. Ha 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 ha! Very funny, she barked as she splashed him with the last bit of the wave's water before it receded back down the sloped beach behind her. As they reclined on the sand, they could see light beams in the distance slowly scanning over the water from the shores of Miaui. Wow, they've really upped their patrols, haven't they, sighed Seely. Yeah, I really hope that the grown-ups can make things right with the Phoenix, Taffy replied. Well, at least they've reopened the farmer's markets, said Seely cheerfully. Taffy nodded and perked up. She absolutely loved the fresh produce and food that Hawoofy was just brimming with. Thinking about it made her so happy. Seely spun his head all the way around to look up at the small mountain behind him that he knew contained Dogger Falls. He could see rainbow lights shining through a hole in the cliffs. Hey, does that mean the Abbas are up? He asked Taffy. For you see, Taffy had become the Dogland resident expert on the Abbas. Taffy and Tuffy, who were going to move up to the College of the Dog Arts over the summer, had both decided to change their plans. Taffy's special bond with Baba Budaba had made her the ambassador of Dogland to Budaba's family, and she was also the ambassador for Budaba's family to the rest of Dogland. Are you wondering what an ambassador is? 
because that's a pretty big word that you might not necessarily hear every day. An ambassador is a person chosen to represent a country in other countries. So we can have many ambassadors because we have so many countries here on Earth. On Dogland, it's a little more informal or unofficial and kind of a new concept. Taffy helps Badaba's family learn about Dogland and she helps everyone else better understand them. They call them the Abbas. They had all been at a summit or big meeting at Dogland's President Bernie Sandals' childhood farm home earlier that summer when President Sandals asked Taffy to go for a walk and talk through the gardens. He turned to her and said, Taffy, your powers of connection have proved to be wonderful and astounding. Having the Abbas here is great for Dogland, but it's also totally new and a little confusing for some dogs, perhaps even scary. He then asked her if she could take on the role of ambassador and official friend to the Abbas, and he saw to it that it was okay with her mother's that she would skip the College of the Dog Arts and head straight for the Dogland Seas Institute. Taffy's mothers were fine with it and proud of their daughter, who gained early entry into the Institute, which is really where she dreamt of being a student since she was a very young pup all along. Baba, Taffy, and Celie had become the very best of friends, and they swam together every single day no matter the weather, which was usually quite lovely on that part of Dogland anyway. Taffy was trying to learn all that she could from Baba, but the other Abbas were very, very shy and acted, frankly, starstruck whenever they encountered any dogs, even her, as they became overwhelmed with the dog's cuteness, quite possibly like what maybe happens when elephants here on Earth see humans. Do you all know about that? So no one has actually proved this to be true. But here on Earth, some people have hypothesized that when elephants see humans, their brains light up in the same way that human brains light up when we see puppies, kittens, and other cute fuzzy things. To hypothesize or to create a hypothesis is to pose a scientific question that you can test out to see if you can get more answers. When you make a hypothesis, you do base it on things you've already learned about the subject. Taffy had a hypothesis that the Abba family knew a lot about the universe, and she was more than willing to spend as much time with them as it took to gain their trust and familiarity to figure out what kinds of questions would work for them so that she and every dog could learn more. She was more than happy to consider Baba Budaba her friend for life. The only thing that bummed her out at all was that she really, really missed seeing her twin brother, Tuffy, and her first cousin, Power Dog, every day. Now, back on the college moon, Power Dog and Tuffy were making their way across the college grounds. The cousin's best friends and roommates of the College of the Dog Arts were both exceptional scholars. Now, that's a word meaning students or learners, and they both studied as hard as they could and learned a lot every day. Life for them on the floating moon was pretty good. The cafeteria was always open and always ready to feed hungry scholars. The gym was half outdoors and exceptionally fun. It had climbing walls and a large swimming and splashing pool and several sports fields. No one ever had to wait to play dog football or doggy disc golf. There was a fabulous art studio and theater and even a radio station and music lab. Power Dog loved to spend as much time in the music lab as possible. There was an incredible master gardening program that Tuffy was enjoying more and more with every passing day. Floating moon gardening was so different from gardening on the Dogland mainland, and he was delighted by the special varieties of plants and mushrooms that could be grown. Power Dog and Tuffy were making their way across the college grounds, stopping to admire the wings of delicate dogger flies as they alighted on flowers throughout the gardens that TikTok Bunny had been training Tuffy to care for. They were tossing a play disc back and forth casually and laughing along the way. As they approached the lovely little cottage of tranquility in the shady glen, they heard voices through the window, and something inside both Power Dog and Tuffy compelled them to quietly hide under the flower boxes to have a sneaky little listen. They could hear TikTok Bunny speaking with someone, 
but neither could figure out who that someone was. They will need you to intervene. Yes, yes, I see. You may need to be prepared for enchantments and shapeshifters, the mysterious voice said. After a pause, the voice continued, and the cats may force the issue. Oh, I see, TikTok Bunny said in the most somber voice the young pups had ever heard. Tuffy started to sneeze, stifled it, and Power Dog held a paw bean up to his nose as he made intense eye contact with Tuffy, as if to say, shh. Tuffy nodded and pointed his nose in the direction of another bunch of trees he knew they could go hide in to discuss what they had just overheard. Who, who, who do you think that is talking to TikTok? asked Tuffy excitedly and breathlessly once they'd gotten to the other bunch of trees and were safely hiding and panting. I'm not sure, Tuffy. That voice sounded familiar, but I just I couldn't put my paw on it. Tuffy nodded in agreement. Whoever it must be, they must be important. Just then, they heard the doorknob of TikTok's cottage door creak as it turned. Hit the deck, whispered Power Dog. They're coming. All right, that's it for now. We will continue this story and find out who TikTok's mysterious visitor was in the next installment. Now I'm joined by my co-author. Hank. Hi, Hello, Hank. Hank. Hi, Hi, Hank. <laughs> we had a ton of big words in this episode. I said tranquility, hypothesis, and intervene. What do you think about that? Tranquility is a big word that means yeah. peace or calm. Yeah. Hypothesis. Hypothesis means you have an idea that might be real and might not. You're right. Yeah, it's a scientific question that you can test. Yeah. I'm really enjoying the way you and I have been exploring language and getting to know some big words and some lesser known but really great words together. We're going to be peppering, as they say, our scripts with plenty of big words you may not be familiar with. Listeners can ask their grown-ups about words they don't understand, and we'd love it if anyone wanted to reach out and ask us about words or suggest some favorite big words. We would love if we could hear your voices, so if you send us a joke, we'll totally put it in. That's right. I love that. We love getting jokes from our friends. Okay, Hank, are you ready for this joke? Yep. Okay, what do you get when you cross a cocker spaniel, a poodle, and a rooster? What? A cocker poodle do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all we got for today. We'll see you next time. Thank you, listeners. If you liked what you heard, you can see more content at our website, PowerDogAdventures, all one word, dot com. There you can sign up for our infrequently emailed newsletter and also submit any good dog jokes. And we'll be forever grateful if you feel like telling your friends about the show, too. If you are looking for more great shows, then please check out the other members of Kids Listen, a grassroots organization dedicated to high-quality audio for kids and families. There are well over 100 great shows to find there. Ask your grown-up to check out kidslisten.org to find out more. Special thanks to our creative partner, the inimitable Jason Rourke, who makes these stories sound extra good with his wise counsel, recording, sound design, and even original music. This podcast has been made possible in part by funding provided by the Regional Arts and Culture Council in Portland, Oregon. Thank you, Rack. It has been made even more possible by listeners like you. Thank you so much for your support and extra big thanks to our Patreon patrons who get early access to all of our episodes ad-free, as well as goodies and merch and birthday shout outs at any level of support. We are not joking even a little when we say we could not do this without you. The Adventures of Power Dog and Dogland is created in the ancestral lands of the Cowlitz, Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Wasco, Molala, Watlala, Bands of the Chinook, and other indigenous nations and tribes of the first people who made their homes along the rivers here in what is now called Portland, Oregon.
And special thanks to our own Granny and Gramps who helped us write and record our Power Dog theme song that you'll hear at the end of the episode. Hey, Granny and Gramps, what key did y'all say that's in? It's, it's in, in D for, for Dogland. special tales to tell and when we come together all our tales will wag as well